What's up folks, this is Ham from the Best Family Show ever. Today we're installing a reverse camera on a Majestic 23A. And the one that I chose is from Do Honest. Got it from Amazon. I've done about five of these installs now. This will be my six. So I think I got it down pretty pat. Everything's working as is expected too. So I'm gonna go ahead with it. I'm gonna show you the camera first. You got this little module here. It's a built-in antenna wire, built-in power cable. I'm going to take this, tuck it in the RV. Right here is a power cable for the light. I'm going to steal the power from one of the running lights so that when we turn the light on, the camera goes on. Inside the car, it comes with a cigarette power adapter with an on and off switch. you plug into uh, the car into this the monitor like so which powers it in, in your car so it's simple cigarette lighter on lights on and the camera turns on that's it so let's get on to the installation part all right we use this prying tool and pry off that uh, middle light first I'll bring it down and I'll cut it all in camera and show you how it's done so that's one screw I like to use no power tools for this because I find sometimes they're too strong and they strip the wood. So if you, if you ease it out slowly, you don't end up stripping things and it's better for these RVs because you only get a one chance. I have a prying tool. Now I'm gonna slowly pry this out because I don't wanna break it. It's been on, it's, there's an adhesive in the back already so make sure you don't crack it. Try to use a prying tool because it can apply even pressure and get it out without cracking stuff. Because if you crack, you gotta buy a new one and it's 42 bucks. For the light? Yeah. The lights come in a whole fixture because they're LEDs. They're not like the old school ones where you just change a bulb. There we go. So I pried it out nicely. I'm gonna take off the previous adhesive. So whoever put this on last time did a good job. They put a lot of sealant on it. That's kind of what you want to see. So what I'll do is the opposite. Before I put this on, I'll clean it out. And I'll put some sealant around here. And then push the light into it. For now, you'll see that this light is hooked onto this little adapter here. I'm going to pull it out and bring it down to the floor and work on it. I gotta make sure that this doesn't fall in. I'm gonna dangle that out. Make sure it doesn't fall in. As long as no one touches that, it shouldn't move. If it falls in, you gotta fish it out. But likely, not gonna happen. Okay. Let's look at this light here. There's a lot of gunk here we gotta remove. Otherwise, it's not gonna stick when we do the adhesive, so we do that later. plug connectors which I'm going to use. We have our reverse camera and the power cable is what I'm trying to look for here. Put the reverse camera somewhere not on rocks. So the power cable. I might actually keep it tied up because I don't need that much room. So this one I'm going to keep tied up to make it neat like so. Get it tight. Okay that's not going nowhere. I might need some of that too. So there. Now we got this much room. That should be enough. The front of these two tips is kind of not enough exposed in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is expose them more. The wire cutter's measurements is saying this is like a 1.3. Nope. One millimeter. Yeah. Nope. It's the smallest. 0.8 millimeters. 0.8 so we got 2.8 here and here's the 
here's the part that we're going to do. This fixture, I'm going to cut right here. It's better than cutting in the back of the RV. Because you cut in the back of the RV, you're affecting the RV. If you cut right here and steal it from the power in the middle, worst case, you just replace this module. And that's 42 bucks. So if you screw this up, it's 42 bucks. So I recommend cutting right here. Like so. All these units here. When I, when I reconnect them, put this in the middle. Like so. To tap the power. 1.6 again. There we go. A little bit there. A little bit there. Okay. So now we got that. And where's the other piece? That. We're going to take the power one, which is... Nope. Okay. Right here. There. All the wires are here. So we're going to match black to back and red to red to white. So the black wire here, the black wire here. Make sure they're make sure that their height is aligned, the tip. So I'm gonna use a butt connector, a wire standard wire connector, and twist it together like that. Let's give it a good connection. I'm gonna get another one of these. Gonna line them up and twist these ones too. Some of you might think that soldering is a good idea, but it's not because these lights blow all the time. If you solder it, it's going to give you a hard time when you fix this job at a campsite. The way I'm doing it enables you to fix it anywhere. Campsites, storage lots, parks, campgrounds, places where you're going to be stuck. So there we go. See how it's connected like that? So what I'll do now is I'll tape this up real good. So this is the connector for the camera. Yeah. This is the connector for the camera right here all right so it's going to connect like this right with the light and basically when you turn the light on the camera turns on so whenever you reverse the extra stuff you got to do is put on the running lights which is pretty typical for RVs so now I'm just gonna use some gorilla tape and gorilla tape no I don't need it more because it's already like that one of the things you got to worry about is water intrusion so I'm going to use this Gorilla Tape here and just give it a bit of a seal so that if any water goes in it doesn't damage stuff. It's not that hard. So simply you take it like this. I like doing it in two steps. I'll do two little, little skinny strips like this. This might be too fat. Yeah. Two stri little strips like this. Get it right through. And then I'll just put a little bit around here just to make sure that this butt connector does not move ever because you don't want it to. Right, so that, that side is not going to move, the black wire side. Take another piece of tape, secure the white wire side just so it doesn't move because this is not going to be like the back of your drywall where in your house there's no bumps. This is going to be in the road. Um, the RVs are pretty bumpy, right? So you want to make sure nothing's moving. So there. That This ensures that if it's going to move, then it'll be a minimal move. Okay. And I also pointed this wire downwards because when you stick it in, the wire is going to go down. Whoops. And sit inside, your, in the, inside the RV. That being said, what I'm going to do is one more water seal, which is around this unit here. So first I'll take this, tighten up this these two wires just so that they're not dangling. Okay. Then you take a big piece of tape, gorilla tape. Mind you, this gorilla tape here, the reason why I'm using it is because it's certified for electrical use. It's actually built to a higher standard than electrical tape, which is why it's usable. And what I'm doing here is I'm building a, a seal, a water seal, basically, like this, around the cable. So that's the top part, right? So water does get in, it won't touch the wires. Or, and mind you, this is not waterproof, but it definitely is better than not doing it. 
You want to make sure that when you go on that road trip, nothing stupid happens. This is just a little piece of tape to give you that extra reassurance. There we go. There. Now, if you look at it, if you look at it now, apart from the butt connectors, the sealant I'm going to put around here, this has another seal for water intrusion. So I'm going to stick this in, poke it downwards, take the camera, and attach it, okay? So I'm going to clean it up because I'm going to put some adhesive on it now. See all that dirt in there? That is going to make the adhesive not stick. So it's going to have so much dirt that I'm going to have to pry it out. All the dirt's been removed, wiped, and uh, just going to make sure which one's the top. This is top, it's going to go in this way. Cameras like that. Okay, one thing to note is the camera comes with double sided tape, but I bought 3M tape instead because I think it's stronger. It's, I don't think it's stronger, it's, it's stronger because the camera tape that it came with, I could easily just take the camera and pull it off. With 3M tape, this is specifically 50 pound tape, the camera is not that hard to take off. Um, so let's go, let's put it on. I'm gonna put some adhesive on here, so let's take a look at it. What adhesive? This one. I'm gonna put it really? on. But what if it doesn't work? Then I'll take it out. Do you have it backwards? Uh, that's a good chance. Let's just plug it in and test it out. Okay, before I put an adhesive on, I'm just going to plug it in and let it dangle. Okay, so now it's plugged in. It's just going to dangle for a bit while I turn on the car and check it out. So the idea is that we've got to be on the running lights. So that camera's on, that's on, lights are on, might appear, take a while to appear, alright so did you look here, I have Three reverse camera units. Um, reason why is because I originally bought seven, right? And of the seven, two were defective, which drove me crazy. Because right now in the video, I just installed the camera. When I went to testing, it didn't turn on. And I was like, why? So I re-looked at the wiring, everything was fine, plugged it back in, didn't work. Luckily for me, I had a second unit. Um, without changing any of the wiring, I just swapped the camera and the monitor, bam, everything worked. So that tells me that this unit's defective. And the reason why I know this unit's defective is because on another RB I did, the exact same thing happened. I put this one in and it didn't turn on. But in the end, I just used another camera, exactly the same thing, direct swap without changing wiring and it turned on, which shows me that the unit's defective. So basically, all I'm trying to say is two out of the seven were defective. And that drove me crazy, because <laughs> I, I checked everything. And if I didn't have a second unit, I would have never known. So let's go to the front and I'll show you. Okay, so this is even the other unit's cigarette adapter. And the other unit, I used the power source for that camera too. All I did was swap monitors and cameras, okay? So now, antenna's plugged in, lights on, on button, camera. That's what you should be seeing right away. If not, it's defective. As you can see, it works. So what I'm gonna do now is carry through with the ceiling and closing up that camera and then gluing it on. So I got some silicone here. Doesn't really, what, doesn't really matter what kind of use. I just have this one open, so I'm gonna use it. Don't need a lot of it, of course. I'll put it around, a bead. I connect back 
to the pigtail. Tape this connector here that connects the camera to the power. Because uh, in case of an accidental tug, I don't want it to fly out. No one's really going to pull it. So all you got to do is make sure there's some good tape on it. Take a pretty hard pull. So now with this up, I'm going to feed this power cord in that wire knot. Get everything in there. So you can choose to put the uh, silicone afterwards, but I find if you get it behind the plastic, it's a bit easier to deal with. So I try to get it behind the plastic. I just like it simple. What about the antenna you're going to put yep. in? The antenna has to be tucked in there too. Antenna is now tucked behind there too. The manual recommends antenna stays on the outside, but I have had zero problems with it being on the inside. Mind you, it's not that long of a run. Okay, so the rest will stick in. I won't run that much cable. seal bead on top and around because just to be safe I don't think you have to but I'm not gonna argue with my wife no point I'm gonna take one part of the double-sided tape adhesive on both sides now we're gonna choose the positioning for the back of camera it'll be right there sealed in fate to seal it off I'm gonna put a bit more silicone around the outside of this just give it, give it a bit more strength again with the silicone just gonna put a bit all around it I want the antenna pointing down otherwise it's really hard to uh, mount this thing so point it down Magnet it, put a magnet on it. I think it's this way it needs to go. So I'm gonna stick that on, that clean spot. Push and close that. Hopefully that stays and that would just rest like so when you're driving. That's how it works. You turn it on. So turn on that switch here, turn on the light, and you see the backup. My bumper is right there, that's the bumper, and that's everything around. So you know exactly when you're going to hit, because the bumper is right here. Get that, and that's it. When you want it off, hit the off button, and you're good to go. And that's it. That's how you install the Do Honest, um, or any wireless reverse camera, by tapping into your running lights. Keep in mind, this is the way I do it. It's worked for my RVs and it's fine. So if you wanna do it easy, you can do it this way. All right, folks, so that's how you install a wireless reverse camera on an RV, the simple way. It only takes about half an hour with this method. And with this method, you can maintain it very easy because there's no holes that you're drilling or anything like that. So if you learned something in this video, give it a like and subscribe in the channel. And until next time, enjoy the outdoors. Peace out.